Welcome to the Whirlwind Fighter Project Engineering and Manufacturing Update. The advanced design of the Whirlwind and subsequent loss of the majority of the engineering drawings and all of the production drawings presents a project with many technical challenges. The project was fortunate in obtaining the data from the aerodynamic scale model wind tunnel tests. This has enabled the project's main CAD engineer, Gunnar Ollison, to create a very accurate CAD model on which to base the whirlwind reproduction. The video shows the extent of the manufacturing work in progress. On the cockpit section, the forward section and the pilot seat. In addition, there is also work in progress on the rear fuselage and fin. It is planned that a series of updates will focus on specific sections in detail to give a greater understanding of the manufacturing processes required to recreate this iconic World War II fighter. In this update, we will focus on the forward section and cannon mount. It could be assumed that the forward section is the front fuselage. This, however, would be incorrect. The whirlwind by design was a true monocoque structure. However, it was of a modular construction. The primary structure being the wing centre section to which all other sections were attached. The forward section comprised of an inclined base plate structure that provides a foundation for the four cannon main armament and is the locating fixture for the aerodynamic but non-structural nose cowling. The base plate consists of a double skinned box section and channel framework. The base plate is directly attached to the front auxiliary spar of the centre wing section by two substantial angled channel brackets. The following images depict the sequence of manufacture of the forward section base plate. This structure carries the forward mounting for the four 20mm cannons, the lower cannon adjustment mechanisms, the pneumatic system and the air receivers for the cannon firing controls, while providing the structural rigidity to resist the fearsome recoil of the cannons. It also provides for the attachment of the aerodynamic but non-structural nose cowling. The forward cannon mounting. Economies of scale prevent the project from using some of the original manufacturing methods. While the form and function will remain true to the original, some of the large castings will be replicated by machining from billet stock and by using welding fabrication techniques. The following images give a snapshot of some of the manufacturing methods and techniques used to produce the forward cannon mounted. Image one shows one of the cannon half clamps being machined from solid to reproduce the half clamp. Image two depicts the main mounting support channels machined from commercially available stock into the required sizes and then profiled to match the cannon split clamps outer diameter. Image three shows that Rather a large number of components required to construct the forward mounting. 
two main channels, the four blank half clamps, the hinge blocks and the hinge pin blocks and the locating bosses for the nose cowling. Image 4 shows the main welded assembly being machined, a complex operation due to the inclined base plate while maintaining the horizontal to aircraft lateral centre line position for the four cannons and front cowling location. Image 5 shows the arrangement of the lower cannon split clamps and the hinge line. Image 6 shows a forward angled socket and locating plates that align the mounting to the inclined base plate at the forward end. The last image shows the completed assembly of the forward section base plate and the front cannon mounting. If you would like to find out more about the Whirlwind Fighter project, please visit our Facebook page or website. Also, please visit the project's active partner and future home for the Whirlwind Fighter, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. Thanks for watching and please keep a lookout for the August updates on the pilot seat and cockpit progress.